Congress. Through the program, I assure you. Uh, President Donahue, thank you for your warm uh, remarks. Members of what I will call the faculty of Bronx Science, friends, parents, relatives, class of 2014. I actually occupied this podium 14 years ago. It's my second time giving a commencement speech to Bronx Science graduates. Back then in the year 2000, I titled that talk, Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> and today I want to title this with a question. How is your brain wired? That's the question. And I want to pose some examples for you to judge for yourself how your brain is wired. By the way, it occurred to me that everyone here graduated at the age of now our, your earliest memory might have been September 11th, 2001. That would be among your earliest memories in life. A tragic day for the country and the world. Um, but a reminder that we have certain responsibilities in life. As already told you, to spread some good in the world. That makes a better world worse world. It sounds like I'm stating the obvious, but for some people that's not always the case. So I'm going to how's your brain wired? So one way to ask the question is, okay, you might be searching for high grades. Surely you've done that in your years here in school. You'll continue to do that uh, to college, sure. But there are two kinds of people who get high grades I have come to find. One kind is the person who might get a 96 on an exam and then say, damn, how come I didn't get 100? I should have gotten 100. Okay, that's the person who's preoccupied with the grade. Another kind of person who gets high grades, you get the 96, that person instead asks, I wonder what I got wrong. I wonder what I didn't fully understand. That person, is about the knowledge and the learning more than they're about the grade. That person gets high grades because that's the consequence of knowing. That's the consequence of insight and hard work, rather than the grade being the object of your hard work. These are two completely different kinds of people. You end up as different kinds of notes. One kind of adult will say in a conversation at a cocktail party, you know, I should know that. I got an A in that class. Is that why you should know it? Because you got an A? Or should you know it because you should know it? What's the evidence you're giving for why you know something? Is it because you worked hard and you learned it? Or because you got an A in the class? There are people who take easy classes so that they get a high grade. What's the, what? Do you realize what you're doing to yourself? Do you know why an easy class is easy? That's because everybody does well in those classes. So you can get high grades in the easy classes and step out into the real world and you'll be just like everybody else. There'll be no reason for an employer to turn to you. Because you've done nothing to distinguish your brain from others who took easy classes. We said, well, I would have gotten high grade, and they'll notice me first. Yeah, yeah, at the, at the gate, they'll notice you. Then you come to work, and it's like, what else do you have to offer? What's your brain doing for me lately? I'll give you an example. Suppose I were an architect and I'm going to hire a, a, an intern over the summer. That's what I'm going to do. And there are two candidates, basically identical candidates, on paper. And one comes in, and this, is a, this is a contrived example, but you'll get the point. One comes in, and I just pose the question. I said, out my window there's a steeple. You know how tall that steeple is, and the, the intern answers immediately. 
Yes, it's 135 feet. Let's say, look, how do you know that? Well, I've, I've memorized the heights of all the steeples of all the major cities of the world, and that one is an important uh, spire, and I know it. 135 feet. Okay. Person has a good memory, a sharp memory, gets the right answer. Okay? The next intern comes in. I ask the same question. Do you know how high that spire is, that steeple is? The person says, I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. The person runs outside, comes back 10 minutes later. So I'm not sure, somewhere between 130 and 140 feet. And he said, well, how, how, how did you arrive at that? Well, I know how tall I am, and I've measured my shadow. I found the shadow of the steeple, measured that, did a little ratio, and I came up with these numbers. If you're an employer, you know who you're going to hire? The second candidate. The candidate who figured it out. The candidate who took some information and created new information about it. If you think the right answer is the measure of your capacity for thought, you will be left behind in this world. Isaac Asimov, a famous scientist and educator, once wrote an essay called The Relativity of Law. What does that mean? Imagine you're on a spelling bee. Again, I'm not a contrived example, but it makes the point. A spelling bee, and you ask to spell the word cat. And one student spells it C-A-T. That person gets full marks for that. Okay? Somebody else spells it K-A-T. That's wrong. That person gets no credit for that answer. A third student spells it QXW. That's also wrong. <laughs> and it's marked equally as wrong as the KAT. But it's not equally as wrong. In fact, if you look up in the dictionary how to pronounce CAT, phonetically, they spell it KAT. So you can argue that to spell cat K-A-T is a better way to spell it than C-A-T. But we have, in so much of our educational system, ways to decide that you got it right and you got it wrong, so you get the credit and you don't get the credit. And where is the middle in all of this? Where is the capacity to think in all of this? I don't know. Back when I was in high school, might have been a comic book many years ago. I went to my sister, four years my younger. My sister, we both all graduated in the public school. I went to my sister and I said, Lynn, Lynn, what do you want to go for lunch today? She said, I don't know, what are my choices? And I'm thinking, why did she ask me that? Is this a brain that has been established and honed on multiple choice tests? so that you are not expected to come up with your own answer? Your answer is, you picked your answer. The, nearly the entire SAT is picking an answer. Suppose you're smarter than the person who wrote the question. Your answer isn't there, because you have a better answer than the options are. <laughs> had a multiple choice brain. <laughs> and we've all been guilty of that. I don't want to single her out, but she's here this afternoon. <laughs> so I'm going to have to like be hanging with her later, so I gotta make to work. You know what grades don't do? You know what they don't encode? They don't encode ambition. They don't encode morality. They don't encode leadership, creativity. If you look at great works of art at the Museum of Modern Art or in the Metropolitan Museum, but when you look at those great works of art, you say, I wonder what grade this artist got in his high school art class. Are you even having that thought? <laughs> no. Go ask, not at this moment, but afterwards, when we're done, 
Go ask every adult in this room. Ask the following question. When was the last time someone asked you your TPA? They will not even remember. They will look at you like, that's a really stupid question. <laughs> because in adulthood, all these other properties matter about who and what you are, your ability to solve problems, your ability to lead, your ability to know right from wrong, your ability to work hard, to rise up after failure, and to continue to attack a problem. I haven't seen any of that encoded in grades. Do grades encode your capacity to have a new idea? There is nothing so painful in life, apparently, than the prospect of coming up with a new idea. I don't know that we measure for any of that. So I want to say to you, as you graduate, you haven't graduated yet, a couple of minutes here. There are people who offer their grades as evidence of their brain hard. There are people who offer what school they went to as evidence of their brain hard. I'm going to tell you now. Do not offer your grades. Do not offer the fact that you are a graduate of almost graduate of the Bronx High School of Science as a substitute for what you may still achieve in life. You know what I mean by substitute? So it says, oh, what are you about? Oh, I'm a graduate of that. Oh, oh, I got it for four up. Excuse me, you can emboss it on your, your SAT. You can put all that all over you. You can do all that. But that's not what makes a legacy. If you do that, you, what you're asking is for other people to shine light on you for having had that association. But where does that light come from? It comes from all those who have achieved. Who went to your school? Who maybe got the 4.0? Yeah, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. But take a look at some of the highest achieving people in the land. We have Bill Gates. Is anyone asking him what his GPA was? Is anyone asking what school should you go to? That doesn't even matter. Look what he has achieved. The, the, list, I, you know, the President of the United States, are you asking? What schools he went to? Well, some are, apparently, but very <laughs> poor. But what you have achieved, these. It doesn't matter how many. Maya Angelou, she died recently. Are you asking what she got in her English class in high school? No, you're looking at the body of work created since then. That's what you're doing. There's a limit where you can transcend so much, even the highest honors in the land don't even get asked of you. Look at Einstein. We can have a conversation about Einstein for an hour, and it will never come up that he won the Nobel Prize in physics because his achievements transcend the Nobel Prize. Your leg the legacy of the Bronx High School of Science. Is not born by you telling others where you went to school. Legacies are born by you achieving. And then others who see your achievement, they ask you what school you went to. That's where the legacy sits. That's how legacy is propagated. So I want to leave you with one charge. 
May you achieve it. Rise up so high that it is the Bronx High School of Science that is eager to put you on its resume. Thank you all.